Good morning. Uh, this is the last day of the Learning 2.0 and I think it's time to make a quick reflection before I forget everything. Um, as you can see, I'm in Warsaw. There's a, this famous building that I think, I think the communists built it during the Cold War, or the Russians built it. It was some, I need to find out more information about it, but you can see it's very gaudy and very tall and at one point I think it was the tallest building in Warsaw and that's really not the case we've got skyscrapers all around us um, you see right there there's a bunch of skyscrapers and uh, my thoughts of this conference um, it has a different feel than the ones in Asia but uh, even that it's smaller and it feels like the first Learning 2.0 that happened in uh, Shanghai where we had a small group of I think uh, maybe 300 or 400 people but the magic of this conference is that it's run by teachers and it's for teachers so what I like about it is that no there's not a there's no like famous consultants that are coming in it's it's, teachers are the experts and they're the ones that are doing the presentations. Um, what I find myself doing in these conferences is what I've always done at the beginning was to document and use the learning to hashtag as much as possible to share what the conference, what we're doing at the conference uh, and use whatever method possible, that's photos, videos, live streams, uh, whatnot. The value I see out of the conference is uh, connecting with people f from around the region. So for me, even though this is, I don't know, maybe my eighth uh, Learning 2.0, um, I'm, uh, I'm in this area, I'm the newbie. Um, so there are people that look, I see familiar faces, but it's again it's very similar to the first conference I went to in Shanghai where I didn't know anyone um, and there's a certain nicety of that you can sort of lay low and um, it's the perfect introverts ecosystem uh, you can lay low and you can sort of participate through uh, social media for a while but I think near the end of the conference, people are getting to know who I am, and um, it's interesting. People uh, associate me with uh, Tech Director Ning um, as a founder, but I'm not a founder of the Tech Director Ning. That that was actually created by Paul White after the first Learning 2.0. So we're talking about t almost 10 years ago, and I've just been active in, I guess you call it, I'll call it, it's like a garden, you have to just keep on planting and planting and fertilizing and working it and what's interesting about the tech director Ning is that we all know it's it's out of date the technology is out of date uh, we all know we need to find something else but it's really hard to start something new and get that flywheel moving and and keep on working I know that there was discussions about that and I'm also I'm all for it uh, if we can find another platform to move on to that's that's fantastic um, and I'll, I'll be happy to help with that process um, and if people want to use the tech director Ning to launch it that's great because we've got the we've got the network there and we want to start something else in in this region that's I'm, I'm for it because right now you've got uh, the ECIS iScootle site seems to be dying um, and to be honest, I feel that uh, ECIS had an identity maybe three years ago, but now it feels like there is no identity to it. It's, it's trying to be a global, reach out to a global marketplace, but then at the same time, then the European market is losing its niche. So it's hard for us to identify to a specific uh, group. So if this, uh, if we can create another one, that'd be great um, because each region has its own unique needs. Um, and Europe is, especially with the European privacy laws, 
it's very unique. And we found this also in, when I was in China. China had a very unique experience. So the, the challenges and the things we needed to do in China, we had a separate, basically, China tech group on Yammer. And the reason why we had it on Yammer was because uh, it wasn't blocked and everything else is blocked. So that's the uniqueness of China. Europe has its own uniquenesses, and so um, I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. Other than that, um, I really enjoyed actually just walking around the, the school. Um, I think my favorite was the library and seeing people uh, making things with their badges, with the LEDs. I really liked the library where they had these little chairs that you could pull out and then move it into like a uh, middle of a bookcases and just relax. Uh, the danger was I think I could have fallen asleep and I have a tendency to snore and snore really loud and I think I would have really freaked people out because uh, the library would not be quiet anymore because I'd been making so much noise. Uh, the other area that I really liked was I went into the design classroom and I just got to poke around and, and see what's happening there. It's exciting to hear that Warsaw is also looking at doing a PYP or elementary school design program. Um, that's something I would like to do at, at Warsaw and it's something that we had at Nanjing and I thought it was really successful. I think the, the challenge that we're having with uh, education technology or technology education, whatever you want to say, is that we're still having that problem of technology being the forefront and not the learning. Um, and we're all in a situation where we have technology everywhere. It's ubiquitous. And I think it's finding the balance between when do you use the technology, when do you, use, when do you not use the technology. It's a very blurry line. Um, and there's a lot of criticism about technology in the classrooms because it's, it's acting as a barrier between the students and the teachers and I'm thinking that we need to figure out how to when do we use when do we use the computers and when do we not use the computers um, I've been proposing that in a classroom the computers can be put away and you use the classroom for its best use and that is to have discussion and conversation and then you can still have note-taking but you just have one student do that on a Google Doc and it's a shared Google Doc and then that task of note-taking is spread around to each different student and they're because they're taking notes for everyone else they're kind of accountable to that and so they're gonna work a bit harder towards making a, like a good note um, that's one idea the where would I guess when you're when you're saying that well you put you don't use the technology in the classroom so when do you use it well I'd say you use it outside of the classroom um, when you're at home or so, somewhere else when you're actually isolated when you're by yourself then you use the technology to, to collaborate with other students and that's where the power of the technology is the power of the technology is that it can redefine re redefine how schools are um, if you really think about it it can be it's a Swiss Army knife it can be quite disruptive in how we think about schools and it requires schools to be really brave in in looking into the future um, also technology it's it's a transdisciplinary tool it's something that links all subjects together um, it, it's it's like you know I, I think of art as a transdisciplinary tool and technology and art can really work really well together tying everything else together so these are just some of the thoughts I'll stop the rambling now until I can think of other topics to ramble about but cloudy day today no uh, sunny weather I was hoping for sunny weather um, that's it for now. Cheerio.